بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome everyone in today's uh, class. This class is for the first secondary grade English subject for the second semester and the lesson is Unit 4 Listening and Grammar from the book Mega Goal 2. It is prepared by Abdullah Hussain and presented by me Mazan Al Harbi. So welcome everyone. Our objectives in today's uh, lesson is that, number one, we're going to listen and discuss to a title called I Wonder What Happened, and then we're going to read an article, and the last thing also we have a grammar rule, uh, a new one that we were going to learn. So all of these are uh, which uh, the objectives that we're going to uh, study today, so let's begin. So, the first question we have is, have you ever been involved in or uh, heard of a situation that was uh, mysterious and seemed to have no logical explanation? So the question again, have you uh, ever been involved or in or heard of a situation that was mysterious and seemed to have actually no logical explanation? For example, whether in um, at school, on a restaurant, or on the street, or at home, or with friends. So have you ever uh, that kind of situation when you have uh, uh, something mysterious did happen? Okay. So let's first welcome uh, our friend Asim. Okay, alaikum salam. So Asim, uh, this is uh, our first question in today's lesson. Okay. So what do you think? Have you ever been in a situation where um, you think that it has uh, no uh, logical uh, explanation or uh, mysterious, uh, let's say? So. Uh, what do you think of that? Is that ever happened to you? So, uh, for myself, uh, I believe uh, We'll come back. Sorry for the delay. We had uh, some uh, problem according to the mic. So, uh, Again, um, Atom, we said that uh, if you have ever uh, been in a situation where you found it actually something mysterious happened to you, whether uh, in those places at school or in a restaurant, in the street or with a friend, well, and, uh, I will begin with myself. We, uh, I, I might, uh, they might kind of have the, this situation where I cannot. Uh, I cannot uh, uh, recognize my friend after we have uh, 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 crashed an accident. So this is really an odd situation, happened to me for the first time. So I can call it uh, a, a very mysterious one when you cannot uh, recognize uh, uh, anyone who is uh, around you. So how about you, Asim? Have you been in those uh, situations? Because in today's lesson, we're going to actually read about a lot of folks. Okay, so how about if we move on and see what uh, more examples do we have on the same uh, the same uh, accident or the same situation? Okay, so now we do have a, a, a uh, listening called "I Wonder What Happened." Okay, so we're going to read an article and then we're going to explain that article and answer some question uh, regarding uh, that article. So what I need, to, uh, what we will do now is we're going to look at the pictures and we're trying to write uh, words to describe the picture for the sum of the things and the actions that we saw for the picture. So only uh, going to write those words, but before we write, of course, we're going to describe. Okay. So as you can see here, so we have uh, like uh, maybe a mansion or a, a public school or something. And there is a train, okay, hanged in the uh, uh, above window 
of that school or of that building. Okay. So what do you think? How 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 is it possible? How is it possible that uh, a train would be uh, hanged or stuck in the uh, in the window in the upper uh, floor? So what do you think? Is there any logical explanation for that photo? If you ask me, I, I don't believe actually there will be one. So what do you think? Is, uh, I think it's very, very, uh, uh, of course, uh, very odd, very strange. Has no logic whatsoever. So uh, okay, we'll see what uh, uh, the other pictures we have. So as you can see here, here we have. Uh, the front part of the truck, okay, is uh, almost falling from the bridge, okay, and it's hanged. Um, maybe it will uh, fall, okay. Obviously, that is what uh, 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 what is obvious here, that it may uh, turn uh, or uh, derive from the world and with track, and it may will fall. And this one, regarding this one, as we can see here, this is a pole, a raging pole. And this the man is uh, trying, obviously, really hard to escape from that pole, okay? So it will not hurt him in any way. Okay, he's uh, obviously a very, very angry uh, pole. And uh, here we have what seems to be a uh, Maybe, I don't know, but uh, or it, it may be a train or something. This is not, uh, for me, what do you think happened? This is actually not uh, an, obvious, uh, an obvious photo. I cannot uh, actually uh, describe that thing. And here we have, uh, as you can see, it's kind of an earthquake maybe or tornado that can, uh, those situations can happen. As you can see, we have uh, uh, a car uh, is actually burnt by a, a house, and everything is falling apart. This is picture number five. And for number six, as you see, this big hole, okay, uh, it must, of course, caused by something. It might be a matrix, okay, who knows? So, uh, now, what we need to do is we're going to try to describe those words or describe those pictures and into uh, the appropriate sentences. Okay, so I'm going to read the sentences and you'll have to guess uh, what each sentence represents each picture. Okay, so for example, for the first one, it says there must have been a hurricane or a tornado. There must have been a hurricane or a tornado. The second one, it can be a real locomotive. It must be an advertisement. And number C, he might have seized the pole. He might have seized the pole. And number D, the driver must have lost control of the truck. The driver must have lost control of the truck. So uh, what do you think happened? Um, so if you can, just tell us, for example, this picture number one. What do you think, which statement or which sentence uh, describes uh, what happened in the first picture? What do you think? So here we have different uh, pictures and different also statements. Uh, one, number one is C. He might have teased the, the pole. Mm, actually, there is no pole here. You may. Uh, uh, you, you, of course, mean number three, okay? Number three is C. He might have seized the ball. Yes, here we can write number three. But what about number one? What do you think? What about number one? What is the picture that, uh, uh, or what is the statement that matches what happens in number one? So how about if me and you uh, check together the answers and see what exactly each uh, or uh, what each statement describes. So the first one describes uh, picture number five. There must have been a hurricane or tornado. And B, it can't be uh, uh, described number one, this one. It can't be a real locomotive. It must be an advertisement. And number three, as you say, Asim, very well, 
he might have seized the pole. And number two, this one, that the driver must have lost control of the truck. So moving on. Now, we have also an article. What are we going to do is we're going to read the title and look at the picture that speculates what the article is about. So we're trying to uh, uh, say or trying to explain what this article is about. So the title say, Anitrius hits how? Anitrius hits how? Okay, so looking at this title and at this picture, okay, at those pictures, what do you think this article will be about? What do you think this article would be about? So, of course, it will be uh, maybe about uh, uh, an accident since there's word uh, hit. Okay, who knows? So, let's uh, read it to me and you and see what exactly uh, this article is. Okay, so, uh, New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, USA, where a New uh, Orleans is located. Well, obviously, after they come, of course, when we mention each city, we must uh, uh, mention the region or the country. And here in this case, we mentioned the city and the state and also the country. Okay? So this is how we know where New Orleans is located. Okay? So let's read the article and we're going to answer a question regarding it. So, when Ray and Judy Fawcett arrived home on the afternoon of September 23, 2000, and three, they discovered to their amazement that Demetrius had crashed through their two-story house. Neighbors said that they had heard a terrific noise, and two people had actually seen the fireball when Demetrius uh, when Demetrius hit. Demetrius had uh, penetrated through the faucet roof and the house two floors. And it had ended up in the crawl space under the house, leaving the debris and fragments along its path. A total mass of 42.5 pounds, that equals 19.3 kilograms from the nutrient, was recovered from the faucet house. The three largest fragments weighed 6.5 pounds, 2.9 kilograms, 2.9 pounds, and 1.3 kilograms, and 2.2 pounds. That equals, of course, two kilograms. So, uh, in short, to break this, uh, they are actually their house has been crashed uh, and uh, uh, by a nitrate. This one, this is a nitrate so from the space and destroy all their houses, uh, their house, okay, the two floors house. So, uh, let's see what will actually uh, what the kind of question that will help us understand more of this. Article. It says here when the faucet got home, okay, the room had been smashed, okay. So this is a true false statement. You have to tell us uh, ask them whether they are true or false. So the first one, when the faucet, okay, this is the, the surname of the family. When the faucet got home, their room had been smashed. So what do you think? Is that a true statement or false statement? Is that the true statement or false statement that their rule they back when they got home? Or do you think the second one is the true, which is the crash happened while they were sleeping? What do you think? Is it the first one or the second one? Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's uh, uh, false. Which one? Is it the number one or two? Number one or two? What do you think? Two. Very good. Two is false. Okay. Number one is true. Uh, it happened when they uh, when they got home. Okay. And uh, the number three. The closest neighbor said they hadn't heard anything. Do you think this is true? They hadn't heard anything. Do you think this is true or false? Well, of course, excellent. Yes, they actually heard something. Okay, so uh, excellent, uh, awesome. So the first one is true, as you can, as you as you said, and the second one is false. The crash actually happened while they were out, and the third one is false because the neighbors heard uh, a terrific noise. Okay.
Okay, a, big, a very, very big noise. So now we're moving to grammar, the last section of our lesson today. Okay, we're going to talk about the bad perfect tense in questions and short answers. When we use bad perfect, we use it actually to indicate an action that happened before another action in the past. Okay? So for example, if we have an action happened in the past, okay, so before it we use the per the past perfect tense. Okay? And what exactly or what are the indicators of using a past perfect tense? And as you can see, use the word had plus the past participle. That participle means the third form of any verb. That participle means the third form of any verb. Here we're going to see an example. So for example, we said we use the past perfect tense before before any action happens in the past. So uh, there is an action happens in the past, which is when we arrived at the airport. This is an action that happens in the past. So what happens before this action? What is what happened before this action? Uh, what happened is that our flight had already left. Our flight had already left. And as you can see here, this is the best perfect tense. This is the best perfect tense, which is had a plus uh, had a plus uh, a bad participle had. Plus a past participle. The same goes for the second sentence. They couldn't get in the house. They couldn't get in the house. This is an action that happens in the past. This is an action that happens in the past. Okay. So what happened before it is the, in the past participle, uh, in the past perfect tense, which is they had forgotten the key. They had forgotten the key. And as we say, the indicator is how can you tell that this sentence is the, in the past perfect tense is when you see had plus the past participle. Had plus the past participle. Let's do some exercises. Okay, so one, uh, one uh, thing to, know, to be noted here is that the contraction, which is the comma uh, and D for had, I, uh, we can say I instead of I have or you, instead of you have, and so on. We can use it with that uh, uh, perfect. So we can use, okay, we can use, uh, uh, for example, let's say, let's say, uh, uh, instead of saying they have forgotten, we can say they'd forgotten, okay, they'd forgotten. So we can omit had, okay, and use instead of the sound or the letter B, that is, of course, expressed by a comma. Okay, and here are how to make a question in the past perfect tense. We uh, use the had, and then the subject pronoun, and then the third form of the verb or the past participle, and then the rest of the sentence. For example, had I or had you been there before? Had you been there before? And the short answer are either yes or no. And if it's with yes, we say yes, I had. If it's with no, we say no, I had not. No, I had not. Okay? So now it's uh, exercise time. So complete the sentences using the verbs in parentheses. Use the symbol best. Use the symbol uh, best and the best perfect form. So as we said, Adam, in the first part, we'll have to use the best, the symbol best, and in the second part, we'll have to use the best perfect. I'm going to show you the first example. I feel much better after I see the result of my test. So I feel this is we should uh, change it to change it to simple best. We can say I felt. I felt. Okay. I felt much better. So the second part, I see the results of my test. So in the second part, we change it into best perfect. Uh, Tense. And how can we actually write that perfect tense? We said we started with had, and we change the verb the see into its uh, third form, and we say seen after I had seen after I had seen. Excellent, Adam. So what do you think of the second one? It has been raining. It has been raining. Notice that here is the uh, best perfect tense. 
But by the time we, what do you think? In which uh, uh, form we should change arise? In which form we should change uh, arise and stop? Okay. So when we was arise, mm, I think we, there is uh, we uh, there is something that uh, uh, should be changed. So we said that we should use symbol past in the sentence and past perfect. So here we use past perfect tense. Now we should use the symbol that, okay? And we should use symbol that with arrive and stop. So how actually should we change it? So what we should say, I'll go tell you this. We should say the time we arrived. Okay, by the time we arrived, the rain stopped. The rain stopped, okay? Excellent job, Aston. So by the time we arrived, the rain stopped. Okay? So, so now dinosaurs, this is the last one. Dinosaurs, this is the uh, verb B, extinct, uh, extinct for uh, millions of years before the first human. Okay? So here we must, what do you think? We must add excellent. Yes, very good. So we say had been. Okay? We say it had been. Okay, had been extinct for millions of years. So let's check our answers together. So the first one, uh, I felt, and the second one is I had seen, and also here we have arrived and the rain had stopped. Okay, and for number three, had been. Okay, and there is a completion of the sentence which is uh, appeared after the first humans uh, appeared. Okay, so now we reach at the end of our lesson. We discussed about, uh, we did discuss, I wonder what happened, uh, one last question, and also we read an article, and then we submitted a new grammar. Okay, so here are the references that we used in today's lesson. So thank you very much, Hassan. If you want to watch this lesson again, please visit the page. And here are the means of communication if you do have any questions or inquiries. So thank you very much, and have a great day. Oh